Hi, this is Jerry. We're back again. We're going to talk about pasta today. Uh, making fresh pasta by hand. Um, it's great if you have a KitchenAid or something that has a roller, you know, a machine to make the pasta at the end. Or one of those that sits on the table, you clamp it down and make your pasta that way. But I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. It, it can be done. It's a little bit more time consuming, but in the long run it's very nice to know and you know know that you can do it and it's a kind of a simple process you only need like four ingredients total all right the ingredients you need of course is one cup of all-purpose flour a lot of people like to use um, bread flour because it's um, the gluten holds and stretches better but all-purpose flour is great for what we need you need one egg you need about a half ounce or about a quarter ounce to a half ounce of olive oil you know it depends on what you're going to be doing I have about a quarter of an ounce here we'll start off with that if we need to add more we can or maybe a dab of water and just a pinch of salt so that's the items we need and I'm going to start out first we're going to take the flour and pour it right on your cutting board now you can use you can do this on your um, counter, um, any cutting board you have, um, whatever you like. A wooden cutting board is great for this. Now what I'm going to do next is go ahead and just make a well in the center of the flour. Just like this. Just so that we have a spot for the egg to go. And first we're going to throw in our oil just pour it right into the well and that's going to help keep it moist and give it the moisture it needs now the egg before I throw the egg in a lot of people just dump the egg and whisk it in there I find it easier to whisk it in your little bowl you go ahead and get it incorporated you know all mixed up and broke so it's easier and then just pour that right into the well and then you can go ahead and take and bring the flour into your egg now you're going to notice it's going to run you just got to catch it bring it all together and then while you have it like this you can go ahead and incorporate your pinch of salt the reason I do this is just so it all mixes together right and there's my salt a bench scraper and a bench scraper is great because it can just scrape it right up and just bring it all just keep mixing the flour and the egg just like so now whenever I say a cup of flour that equals out to about four ounces so what it, what it actually comes out to be is four ounces equals one cup of flour. Once you have the flour almost incorporated and you see it starting to clump together nicely, you can go ahead and place the bench scraper down and use your hands. It's going to get messy. But just incorporate all the flour into the egg and you're going to start kneading it together. And you notice, you know, sometimes whenever you do this, depending on the type of flour you use, depending on what, you know, where you're at and the location-wise as far as the states or down south or up north, humidity um, has a lot to do with this. If you notice that it's real flaky and you know, still almost like not enough oil or not enough moisture, you can add a little bit more oil to it or you can add um, more flour if it's too wet squeeze it and then roll with your palm and then pick it up do the same taking this push it in just like that now I'm starting to see it's starting to get really incorporated everything's coming into it but I think it's just a hair dry so what I'm going to do is add just a little bit more 
oil to it. And it's just a drizzle. It's probably equivalent to maybe not even a not even a quarter of an ounce more. And then just work that in. Like I said, grab it, squeeze, grow with your palm. Grow with your palm. Now you see the moisture coming from the oil is starting to turn it nice and yellow. It's going to be coming into the pasta ball we want. And we want it to be elastic and kind of firm. If it's too wet, it'll be sticky. And we don't want sticky. Let me move the excess. Now we pretty much have our dough. Now with this, you want to go ahead and take some saran wrap. And just, you know, wrap it in saran wrap real quick. it to the side and let it rest for about 15 to 25 minutes so that the gluten uh, releases, relaxes. And as that gluten relaxes, it makes it a little bit more um, hand, you know, manageable, um, a little bit more elastic. Um, so when that rests for about 15 to 25 minutes, we'll be back and we're taking the roll out some pasta. Okay, we're back. Um, our dough's been resting for about uh, right, at, right around 15-20 minutes and a few things you're going to need um, to go ahead and uh, continue and finish this off of course you need a rolling pin you're going to need just a little bit of flour to dust on the cutting board on your tabletop or whatever you're using so the dough don't, don't stick to it and I have my bench scraper so I can use that for my knife for my you know for my slices or whatever we're gonna do, what kind of pasta. So we'll get started by opening our pasta up and we'll show you what we got. Now I've already cleaned my cutting board off. I clean, you know, I always keep a clean area. That way you can keep moving. You notice your dough is a little just kind of sweaty or kind of moist, which is great what you want. And I'm just going to take and go ahead and cut myself off a chunk of it. Set that to the side and always keep it wrapped. Whatever you're not using, go ahead and put it back in the saran wrap. And what I'm going to do with the dough is just kind of make a, try to get a square, a square looking piece out of it the best we can. So when we roll it out, it'll be kind of a square. Easier to cut your pieces out of and make what you want. And just put firm pressure. Don't push too hard and cut the dough. You know, you don't want to do that. And just keep rolling it out, turning. And don't forget the dust, because I can feel it sticking already. And you can dust your roller out also. And just keep rolling it out till you have what you want. Now what you're looking for is a nice thin piece of dough so that when you get ready to cook it, it actually cooks all the way through. And you can see it's starting to stick again. So we're taking out just a little bit more flour. And it's just a little process to do. You just want to keep it moving, get it rolled out, all the way to the end. Firm, even pressure, all the way, back and forth. I'm just doing a small sample for you guys, since we're doing it by hand, so that everybody knows that they can do it by hand. You don't always have to have the machine, it just takes longer, and it's more... Um, 
you gotta have a little bit more patience and trial and error when doing it by hand. You can see the gluten working is starting to stretch back every time you roll it out. I'm taking it all the way to the edge every time. You can see it's starting to get thinner and thinner. And I just flip it over just to keep the flour on each side. Now as I'm going here, I see what's been pushed out. I'm going to go ahead and cut those ends off just like this. Just put those to the side. So I'll give myself a nice square again. See now we got a nice square piece of pasta. And like I said, it's getting thinner and thinner. As you can see, we want it to be almost translucent, and that's what we're going for here. Not translucent like a glass, but so you can see the shadow of your hand possibly. But just to recap, what we've seen was that with the dough we needed four ounces which is equivalent to one cup we needed a pinch of salt one egg large, one large egg and we ended up using about a half ounce of olive oil to make this dough and this dough can be used anything from fettuccine to spaghetti to lasagna sheets like right now cut that in half you got two nice little pieces of lasagna sheets um, we can make um, bow tie I mean all kinds of pastas we can make with this ravioli so now if you look you can hopefully maybe see my hand shadow behind that that's very close it's nice and thin we're gonna go ahead and stop there and what we're gonna do is we're going to take and cut a little piece off here because I'm going to show you Let me trim that I'm going to cut this piece off here and just show you that you can do things like bow ties you have your piece here you just want to squeeze it right in the center squeeze it together, pinch that dough together and there you have nice little bow ties that you can make now if you had um, one of those um, roller cutters that makes the edges nice and wavy that would look really really nice like a bow tie but that right there is a bow tie pasta and the next thing we're going to make is um, like a fettuccine. And like with fettuccine, what I like to do to make it easier is you roll your pasta up just like this. Make sure it has plenty of flour still. I mean, the mine looks pretty nice. And you're able to just cut your fettuccine out. just like so some people do fettuccine a little bit thinner, some people do it a little bit thicker but there I have my fettuccine cut and you just unroll it and once you have all your fettuccine um, ro um, unrolled and loose. It's always good if you're going to let it set for just a little bit, dust it with flour so it does not stick. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn a pan on that we have sitting here 
and let it get nice and hot and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cook up this pasta and show you what we have now with this I'm going to add some salt generous salt maybe two big pinches and what we like to do here is a little bit of olive oil it'll help keep it from sticking and as soon as the water comes up to boil or up to temp we're taking um, drop the pasta, we'll plate it, and we'll show you what we have. Okay, we're back, and our water's are, um, almost to a boil, and that's about when we want to drop a pasta. And this being fresh pasta, it you just sprinkle it right in, just drop it right in there. And right after you drop it, you might want to go and give it a stir. That will ensure, hopefully, that it does not stick to the bottom. And just to say, fresh pasta cooks a little bit quicker than pasta that's in a bag or in a box from the store because um, it's fresh. Everything's, um, you know, it don't have to actually come totally back to um, draw that moisture into it. So my pasta is done. It drops right off, so it's completely done. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and plate it and we're just um, give it a taste. Okay, this is the fresh pasta we just plated. And what I like to do is sprinkle it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese and parsley. It gives it color, gives it flavor. It looks wonderful on the plate. And like I said, I'm a stickler for wiping your plates down. And let's give it a let's give it a taste real quick. And like I said, pasta that you make fresh and you cook up at the house shouldn't take no more than three, maybe five minutes. Mmm. That parmesan cheese. That parsley. It is great. quick recap um, what we made here the rest of it and what we have here is probably enough for two possibly three people depends on how much you like pasta so with that being said four ounces of flour one egg about a half ounce of oil and a pinch of salt and you make it a pasta for about two to three people so I hope you enjoyed the video this is Jerry, come cook with me.